Yeah, you know, one of the things that I have found most interesting, Jay, about the times we're living in is the rapid escalation in narrative, the rapid escalation in the way things continue to unfold. And it's almost um, freaky to me. A lot of the things that I've been talking about for a few years, based mostly upon logic uh, about paying close attention to crumbs that are being dropped by the elite that they usually do that. They drop some crumbs and say, we told you, you just weren't paying close enough attention. Mm -hmm. Following the, the crumbs, following the logic, using a little bit of mathematics, a little bit of economics and the sprinkling of old school logic. And all of a sudden, the things that I've been talking about when no one was talking about, not only are they happening, they're escalating. And when it was one thing, when a guy like myself was saying two years ago that you're going to see a digital currency that will be backed by gold that will emanate from the BRICS nations based upon gold being revalued tier one reserve status based upon the coalition of these countries that are all rallying against the dollar. I've been saying this ad nauseum for two years. And it was interesting to me to see Fox News pick this up this week. And uh, on Monday, they say Russia, China may, may be preparing new gold-backed currencies. Get this. But expert assures U.S. dollar is still the safest currency today. So today. they're basically saying, yeah, it's coming. Now, this is a crumb, right? They drop yep. a crumb. Most people don't see it, but they are coming out and acquiescing that, yeah, it looks like they're going to be preparing for a gold-backed currency, but the dollar is still the safest today. Sure it is. Um, we can look at the, the narrative. You know, I've been following first gold being reclassified, a tier one liquid asset. And then I saw prior to that, actually, the front running of this decision by the massive acquisition of gold by the central banks, by the repatriation of gold from the Bank of England and the New York Fed. And we saw all of these things happening. We saw the Belt Road Initiative, this, this massive infrastructure project that, that is encompassing 70 plus percent of human population in and of itself. And the gold that is, that is being accumulated by the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, China, India, South Africa, on top of all the countries that are joining in. It was just announced that um, in July, uh, China purchased 80.1 tons of gold in July alone. And when you talk about the likelihood of this happening, I think it is becoming greater and greater and greater because if you look at who's been purchasing all the gold, it's the Asian nations, it's Russia, it's India, it's the nations that have expressed interest in in joining BRICS. And I think that it's starting to happen at a much greater speed, this de-dollarization, this, this coalescing, if you will, um, uh, against the Western hegemony. And I, it just seems to me that these countries are seeking to build their, their own sphere of influence, uh, as the article talks about, that they're um, they are trying to stand up to the West and the record amount of gold that China has been purchasing, um, the article says, has raised some eyebrows. And, you know, um, the Swiss gold imports to China hit a five-year high recently. And, you know, you're talking in July, 80.1 tons of gold delivered to China worth just under $5 billion, double what they bought in June, 33 tons of gold. So they continue to buy and buy and buy. And I found it interesting that they also talk about it being a digital currency. Now I talked about that for a long time because the, the Belt Road Initiative is all settling on the new digital yuan. And it's called a four-year beta test. The digital yuan is gonna be the rails by which the finance minister of Russia said they're going to peg this new currency system to commodities. And it's all starting to unfold. Now you're getting mainstream media talking about it. Right. And so I think it's starting to get to that point where things are going to get very real. And I think you can 
evidenced this, the real part, by the massive bleed down of metals that we're seeing day in and day out. Now, the last time I talked with you, there were 36 million ounces of silver in the registered category. There is now under 34 million ounces of silver in the registered category. The registered category is being bled down. And, you know, when you talk about 50 million ounces were imported into India in September alone, um, you know, that's more than not only 35% of annual mine supply, but it's also more than the entire COMEX holds in the registered category, almost double what it's holding in the registered category. And uh, so, you know, here again, we're seeing uh, massive deliveries in, in gold and silver off of COMEX day by day by day and, and out of the ETFs. One thing that's um, really interesting is that Every single day lately, we have seen metal come out of the silver ETFs. And so, you know, to the tune of one to two million ounces every single day. In fact, just, um, I don't know, just a few days ago, I was reading an authorized participant took 2,578 million ounces, 2,578,000 ounces out of SLV. And when you look at what happened on Wednesday alone of last week, in Wednesday alone of last week, according to Ed Steer, there was almost 60 million ounces of um, gold taken out of the ETFs and the exchanges, the Western exchanges, the LME and the, and the uh, COMEX, and almost 900,000 ounces of silver in one day. And this is what we see happening. And so put it all together. Right. You're seeing the smartest money in the world use price suppression to drain the shelves, not only of the LME, which is the lowest silver inventory since they started keeping record. But look at at at, at the registered category. There was 120 million of ounce, ounces of silver in the registered category during silver squeeze, and now we're down to 34. Um, and you're talking a situation where the smart money is holding down the price with levered contracts and running away with all of the supply when no one's looking. And to add fuel to this, you have the commercial banks net long. You put it all together, the smartest money in the world is using price suppression to drain the shelves of all of the supply from every corner of the Western world. Uh, and the Eastern folks, well, they're, they're wise to it too because they're taking record deliveries. You're, you, you're, the Swiss are saying China's taking more imports of gold than ever. India's importing 50 million ounces of silver. They're all by, Turkey bought more gold than any country on the planet the first seven months of the year. You can see it's happening. And they're bleeding dry, the exchanges. And price is being held down to misdirect people's assessment of reality. We have a perception of reality based upon manipulation of price that is allowing the smartest money in the world to reposition, but not just reposition into more debt instruments or derivatives. They're taking the real thing. And you can see it. And every day we're seeing a million or two million ounces coming out of SLV in deliveries by the authorized participants. It's getting crazy, man. And I, I think you add all of that together and then look at the supply in this industry and in the wholesale industry. And what you are seeing is the potential for the first time that I can really remember where maybe the physical demand overwhelms the, the paper suppression because anyone in their right mind, like the managed money that would be short in this environment when you can't find anything. I mean, supply is so tight right now um, and it's being bled down off of Comex where in one month, a country can take one and a half times in deliveries, one and a half times what is in the registered category. And if you put all of the metal together, which is eligible and registered, the eligible is not for sale, the registered is, you're talking a, a almost 300% um, paper to gold ratio, where there's three times the amount of paper, about two and a half times the paper than there is the gold. You do the registered category, only, which are the bars that can be delivered, it's almost 19 times more paper.
than gold. So one out of every 19 gets their silver and 18 get the paper shaft. But long before that, the 18, I mean, they, they'd shut it down because we're this close to there being a real short squeeze, a real problem. And um, I don't know, it's getting interesting.